Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com, and today I want to show you how I finished this orangutan mask. In the last video, uh, you may have seen me do this one. I got to do some really interesting things with this one that I had never done before, using some um, hot glue to make the texture on his flange, um, putting a, a wig on a mask. I've never done that before. This one I wanted to go real minimalist with just inexpensive materials that anyone might have around the house. But the other thing I wanted to do was to make it look as close as possible to the character in the Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes poster <laughs> that I've seen. That particular character in the movie didn't have the flange, so I left the flange off of this one. And because the pattern can make either a wearable mask like this one or a wall display mask, I went ahead and used the back pattern for this one. So it's totally different. Um, this one isn't nearly <laughs> as realistic as this one is, but I I really kind of like it. It has that kind of an organic feel to the way it was painted. It was done very, very easy just with some, um, basically a, a gray stain over some brown paper. And I, I really like the way it came out. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll show you how I did this. This guy's helping me, by the way. <laughs> I just got him a day ago, and he's, he's helped me out in the studio. He's really a nice little dog. For the first orangutan, I used a charcoal spray paint for the undercoat, and it's really dark, which and they really are, that color. But this time, I wanted to try something that's completely different. I have used the brown paper itself as the base color. I think the most recent one was the for the moose, but he doesn't have any fur marks like the moose did, and you know, different colors and everything. So I just wanted it gray over the the brown paper and I wanted some of the brown to show through. So I mixed up some black acrylic paint with golden glazing liquid. The glazing liquid makes the black transparent and it also slows down the drying time, which is really important when you're doing something like this. Then I pulled most of it back off again, just basically just leaving a dark gray stain. You can still see a lot of the brown through it and it it isn't as, um, it isn't as close in color to the real orangutan as the first one was, the, you know, the spray painted one, but it has a more organic feel. You can see that it's handmade and it kind of fits with the rest of the way I'm going to make this guy. Very minimalist uh, orangutan, this one. Now, of course, I, I needed to let it dry before I, I did anything else to it. And the first thing I wanted to do was to make the eye sockets and just that little dip at the top of his nose just a little bit darker, just a little bit. And then I let that dry again. Now you, you probably noticed already that it isn't um, exactly the same color all over. It isn't really controllable, this particular method. Um, it just kind of does what it does, especially because I was pulling some of it off and some of it uh, is absorbed more in some places than others. You can see kind of the edges of the paper and stuff. So you probably will want to test this out on a scrap of paper before you decide if you want to do it or not. I really like it, but that, <laughs> that doesn't necessarily mean that you would. So, so do test it first. At this point, I had to decide how I was going to make his hair. For no obvious reason, I had an almost full can of orange spray paint, and I can't remember ever using it. So if you watched a video of me making something that was orange, please remind me what it was, because I really can't remember. But I'm glad I didn't throw it out, because I think it was perfect. It's not not red, like a real orangutan's hair, but it, it matches really nice <laughs> with the skin color. So I really like it. And it is still an, an obvious orangutan, even though the color's not exactly right. So I sprayed the, the orange paint over a couple of sheets of light chipboard. It's the same thing that cereal box cardboard is. And I drew a line down the middle of my sheet just because I wanted my hairs to just be half as long as the, the sheet was. And I used a straight edge um, just to help me cut off all the hairs. I went and sat down and did this in another room. Listened to a podcast again. Um, I needed a lot of hair, and so it did take a little a bit of time. You have to use a really sharp knife. I wanted to make sure that the hairs were held together at the top, so I didn't uh, I didn't go all the way through the sheet. I, I left a, an edge at the top that wasn't cut. And once I had like half of the sheet done, I tried curling it up with the scissors. Uh, this is what we used to do with curly ribbon 
that you use for Christmas presents. I, I don't actually know if they still make that or not, but it was used to be really fun. And it does work with paper and cardboard. Just uh, just very lightly pull the bottom of the of the hairs uh, against the sharp edge of the scissors and it, it curled it up a little bit. Not a, not very much though, but it was it was good enough to start with. I I did go back over it and, and um, played with it a little bit more. And then I then I pulled the the fringe apart. I just wanted like five or six hairs in each little bunch, and I used hot glue to stick them onto his head. And I, I just started near the bottom and I I worked my way up. And once I had that half done, I decided I liked it. So I cut the other half of the sheet of cardboard into hair too. And then I covered the other side. But there was a bald spot at the top. <laughs> so I cut one more. This one has shorter hair. And then I... You know, I stuck all that on. I gave him a little bit of a haircut. The The fellow that's in the poster for the Planet of the Apes movie, his... His fringe or um, his bangs, I guess you could call them, they don't come all the way down to his eyebrow bone. And I probably, you know, if I wanted it to look a lot more like him, I would have given him more of a haircut. But I, I kind of liked him the way they were, so I left him. But then I had to figure out how I was going to make the beard and the mustache. Because the, the cardboard is just way too stiff. It just it, That was not going to work. So I used a couple of pieces of the brown paper that I had used for the paper mache on his head. I I sprayed I sprayed that with the orange paint and I just held a piece of cardboard up so that the top like half inch wouldn't get any of the orange paint. And then after the orange paint was dry on the paper, I mixed up another uh, another just small batch of the glaze using the the acrylic black paint and the glazing liquid. And I painted the edges of the paper. And I, the reason I wanted to do this was I wanted it the, the top edge of the mustache and beard hair <laughs> to be exactly the same color as the skin on the orangutan. And then I wouldn't have any like really obvious uh, line of where the you know where the hairs were attached. That was the one problem that I had with um, putting the the wig hair on the other orangutan was that it was really hard to keep the the backing of the wig from showing. I I just didn't I didn't glue it on correctly or something, and that that was something that kind of bothered me. So I wanted this to just kind of meld in just a little bit better than that had. I had to let that dry again, and and then I had to cut it up into little bitty hairs. <laughs> I actually tried cutting it first with some scissors. and I, I thought it would be easier for some reason with the paper, but it wasn't at all. But it turns out that the straight edge and the knife worked really well. It went way faster than it did with the cardboard. So that uh, that's the way I ended up doing it. It really didn't take very much time. And then I, could, I just made up a really small batch of the cooked flour and water paste. That's the same thing that I used uh, to put the brown paper on the the orangutan for the paper mache and so I just mixed up a little bit more and I used that uh, to hold the beard and mustache on. I have to admit, okay, <laughs> I tried when it was still wet I tried putting it in front of a fan to make it dry faster and <laughs> some of the hair started blowing off. I have to, <laughs> that, that wasn't a good idea so don't, don't do that. Um, I just I just left it for a while, uh, took the dogs for a walk or something and let it dry all the way through. I decided I wanted the the hairs to be a little bit curlier than that, and so I used the the trick with the scissors again. A couple of hairs got a little bit too curly. I got a little bit carried away, but most of them are okay, and it did turn out all right. But then, after I trimmed the beard and mustache, which didn't take very long, um, maybe I should have stopped there. I'm not not entirely sure. the The fellow in that 
poster that I've been looking at, he has really short, light gray hairs right around um, the, the the edge of his beard and mustache, right right up close to his lips and his, you know, on on the edge of his muzzle. And because I was inspired by that photograph, I decided maybe I should try to make my guy uh, look a little bit more like him. And so I did add the the white and gray fur right in that kind of line, right right below his lips. And I, I'm not entirely sure that I like it. Let me know what you think. Now, if you want to uh, see how I made the other orangutan and how I used some foil to fill out some of the details, um, or if you would like to see the videos that I made showing you how the pattern pieces go together, you can find all that right here. And you can also find the pattern there if you would like to make an orangutan of your own. Just go ahead and click on that. I'll put a link to it down below too. Even though this one's definitely a minimalist design, I think I really am happy with him. It just kind of shows you that you can do a lot of really interesting things just with stuff that you happen to find around in the house. Why did I have orange paint? I don't know. <laughs> But I never throw anything out. So that was down in the basement and I, it was just exactly perfect. So go make something and then come back and visit me. UltimatePaperMache.com. I'll see you there.